Hey everybody, this is GT Hill. Hey, what's up? I'm Marcus Burton. Awesome. Always, always good to see you, man. <laughs> this is why I took this job, just so I could uh, spend more time with you. Oh, you were here first. Uh, nice try. What's it? You were yeah, here first. No, I mean, nice try. Took the job working with you. Oh, man. I got took you. The I job see. working with you. I volunteered. <laughs> I volunteered when no one else would, uh, but that's that's okay. So you told me to talk about containers today. So when I think about containers, the first thing I think about are shipping containers. And I've been told I'm a bit eccentric. So I built a three-story high shipping container home. Now, I didn't get done with it, um, but not like three containers. It was actually nine containers. Actually, I'm gonna, <laughs> have you seen a picture, Marcus? You haven't been here, but I'm going to text it to you. Send it my way. We'll put it up there for everyone. Uh, yeah, they're going to love that. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was going to be nine shipping containers. Um, but when you, so when you said, Hey, we're going to talk about containers, that's what I thought of yeah. is these intermodal <laughs> shipping containers that are cool. It's like big boy Lego blocks and I, <laughs> there's nothing better for me. I just think it's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's what the, the technology is kind of named after that. I mean, I, I mean, containers are basically lightweight VMs, but, you know, if you've seen Docker, you know, Docker is the con the container engine, the way to run containers, but their logo is actually a whale carrying shipping containers. Oh, Have I, you, like I don't that. know if you've seen that. You've seen it? We'll put it up there uh, no. for, for people as well. So you said a lightweight VM. Yeah. I don't want to assume that everyone knows what a VM is. I don't really want to assume that I know what a VM is. <laughs> so a VM, a virtual machine is... Um, I can have an operating system and then usually maybe one or two functions on that operating system, but I'm going to put that along with others on the same piece of server metal, right? So I'm going to have, yeah, you know, I'm going to have a Linux doing DNS and I may have Windows doing authentication and I'm, you know, I can have multiple things sitting on there. So you said containers were like a lightweight version of that. So I can... You know that's a that's a good teaser. I, did I say VMs right? Did I actually define that correctly? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good good definition. I need positive affirmation in my life, man. Great I, job, you man. You know me. I'm. You're great. I'm a, I love you. I used to be a positive affirmation. <laughs> that was my love language, but I've kind of changed to uh, to other things that I won't discuss here. All right, so tell me just a little bit more about v, about containers. Yeah, again, it's a lighter weight sort of sort of VM, but it's a basically a way to package together software with all of the dependencies of that software. So, you know, you write some code and that code requires libraries and frameworks and other, uh, you know, other sort of software dependencies in order to work properly. So it's basically a way to package all that up into, you know, a self-contained unit that's that's portable and modular, basically. Okay. So, so, okay. Talking about shipping containers, because I think this this kind of works a little bit, is this guy Malcolm McLean. So I did a little research, you know, because I like containers when I start building it. Yeah. So this guy Malcolm McLean actually built, which sounds like John McLean. Maybe it's just because I like Die Hard. <laughs> Best Christmas movie of all time. I agree. Uh, awesome. So anyway, this guy Malcolm McLean made the shipping container. So before that, it was just, hey, let's just pile a bunch of stuff on a ship or in the back of a semi-truck. Um Maybe we didn't have those then, but anyway, so he decided, he's like, you know, let's standardize that. Yeah. So that standardization, one of the advantages of that standardization is that, you know, I think we used the word intermodal earlier. The intermodal just means it can be on a ship, a semi-truck or a train or uh, any other kind of conveyance. You can put one in the back of a really big airplane and, you know, mm -hmm. move it around wherever you need to go. Did you say is conveyance? That... Did I say conveyance? I, don't know, I thought you said <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said conveyance, man. That was it's a good word. Is it? Man. Hundred dollar word at least. Sweet. <laughs> PayPal me, brother. All right, so am I on the right track for for Yeah. I mean, that seems like what you're talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, from a developer's perspective, the way that, you know, what shipping containers do for transportation industry, containers, software containers do for the software industry, which is that a developer um that's building an application doesn't need to worry about all the transportation, we'll call it, all the infrastructure that his software is going to run on. If he builds it into a containerized environment, it makes it portable. So he builds his software and the dependencies of that software, it's containerized. And then the operation and plumbing of, op of running that container on infrastructure, he doesn't really need to worry about that anymore. So in the same way that shipping containers made it modular, um, you know, one, one, one other way to think about that would be like, you know, Windows and Microsoft, uh, Microsoft and Windows, Mac versus Microsoft apps. I don't, I don't know if you've got any apps that are like that. 
that you can only run it on one, you know, one OS version. Yeah, my favorite packet capture application actually runs on Windows only. Uh, that's mm. not available for Mac, and I'm a Mac person, so that's that's a kind of a pain. Now I can just throw money at the problem. I can just buy a three hundred dollar laptop, you know, that's running right. Windows if I want to, <laughs> or I could dual boot this one. But that's you know, that's painful. Right. Right. Yeah. And if you're going to solve that as a developer, you've got to just build the software sort of twice for both for yeah. both OSs. But in an enterprise application, you can't just you know, you can't just expect customers to, to operate both instances. So you got to build your architecture in a way that makes it more portable for both instances. Or when I say both, I mean, really, it's any environment that you want to run your application in, whether it's, you know, any of the sort of tier one cloud providers, private cloud options, um, you know, on-prem even, or local, you know, local cloud options. So containers really so solve that problem that makes it portable across different environment. Anywhere that you can run a container engine, you can run a container. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, since I've been here at Extreme, we've went from one cloud provider to actually three, and it was driven by customer demand. But what I remember yeah. happening was one customer said, no, I don't want to use that particular cloud provider. And what seemed like a matter of days, and I'm probably bragging and I'm not being all, you know, go extreme, <laughs> but it is good. We went from one cloud provider to three in what felt like, you know, less than a month. And it's the yeah. same functionality, right? So there's the developers are still building new features for these containers. At least that's the way I, I kind of think of it, these microservices and containers. They're building that right. while someone else is like, okay, we're going to port that over to, you know, cloud provider two and cloud provider three. Um, so I don't. Yeah. Yeah. There's like another part. Great. Yeah. I've, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. There's another aspect of that, like compatibility matrix of thinking about multiple clouds, which is, you know, think about like uh, browser compatibility. If you're building an app that's heavy on front end usage and you got to click through a bunch of buttons and stuff, I mean, the number of sites and apps that work with certain browsers and not with others, like from a developer's perspective, containers are a little bit like if you could bundle the browser and the application all into one. So all of the dependencies, we call it, the environmental dependencies of running that application is what a container is. If you could take your browser and bundle it into the app so you don't have to think about the client-side browser, that's kind of like what com what containers do from solving the compatibility matrix of operating on different environments. We need to make sure people out there know that this doesn't actually exist, at least not for our Mac and our PCs. Right? No, yeah, it doesn't solve br browser compatibility problems. <laughs> it doesn't problems. solve that problem yet. <laughs> but but we maybe we're going to start a company, Marcus, you and I. <laughs> uh, you can be the CTO and CEO. <laughs> I don't want that kind of responsibility. So one of the things that, so, you know, I talked about VMs to start with. That's kind of something that's kind of still what I'm most comfortable at least thinking about is that when I would think about resource allocation for mm -hmm. VMs, if I have a customer, you know, maybe I have one customer with 100,000 APs and they're very heavy on events. So from an analytics perspective, they are really event driven. And maybe I have another customer with 100,000 APs and maybe they they just need more authentication, right? They have high end right. usage for guest traffic. I don't know, making stuff up here. But right. those are really different yeah. things. But the problem with VMs that, that I've encountered this in real life in my in the past is that if, for each problem, it's the same solution, which is spin up more VMs. But right. it sounds like containers, we can almost divert resources and say, okay, we're going to make this this container system bigger and this one right. smaller. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with a VM is that, you know, or at least the way that it's been, it's worked in networking systems is you got to, you got to take the whole VM and you're basically replicating functionality that you don't really need to replicate to scale. But I mean, that's a great point that different environments put different kinds of load on systems, networks, transportation networks with high transients put put lots of demand on events but yeah like you said guest you know guest access networks might put more load on that specific function um and so that's where kind of containers and microservices dovetail together okay. um and maybe it makes sense to you know to even just explain at the next level kind of what you know how that works yeah, i was actually just going to ask that is i, I want to you know if you can deeper dive into that for me you know what are those differences well, and that and that's where why VMs are such a nice comparison is because people understand VMs. They're basically doing the same thing with containers. Is that a VM? You know, you have underlying hardware that's your computing resource, and 
for VMs, you install a hypervisor, which is basically a way to abstract access to the hardware. So then on top of the hypervisor, you install, you know, operating guest operating systems, and then your application and its dependencies and all that. And it's kind of heavy. What containers do is basically you have your, your hardware in a base OS like Linux or something that can be lightweight. You run your container engine on top of that, and it provides your abstraction into hardware without requiring the guest operating system at all. So you package in your libraries and other code dependencies, and it just runs and accesses those underlying hardware resources, compute, memory, disk, networking, all of that through this container engine without a guest OS at all. We talk about containers being able to add resources to one maybe microservice like authentication or event-driven, uh, and right. then maybe we don't need as much anywhere else. Who manages yeah. that? What is that a person? Is that an orchestration <laughs> orchestration? Is that an orchestration manager that hopes to get promoted to an orchestration director and they're the one <laughs> controlling all these knobs? So who what actually does that or who does that? Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not. Um, it, it can be manual. Um, in which case it's it's a DevOps team. It, in uh, The preference would be for this to be automated. It's still by a DevOps team, but you're building software that automates this, uh, the monitoring of services, but then the ability to scale based on, you know, based on load or the requirements of the application. And that's where, you know, there's a, um, well, what Docker is to containers, meaning it's sort of the open source, the standard way to run containers. Kubernetes is to orchestration open source, the standardized sort of way to perform orchestration of platforms that are built on containers using microservice architectures. So orchestration, I think of the conductor at an orchestra. So yeah. he or she, the orchestration is actually, you know, hey, you need more resources. Hey, you don't need as much. It's a, right. it's a self man. It's a manager of that. Exactly. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, you know, containers fail sometimes. And so is restarting containers that need to be restarted, scaling up scaling up or scaling horizontally if it's distributed compute or something like that that needs to scale you can scale horizontally and you put that behind a load balancer so it monitors that whole process and it it runs scripts or other you know it uses other tools to be able to kind of control the whole thing conductor is a perfect word for it wow that's kind of awesome and all this lives in the cloud most of the time yeah most of the time it's in the cloud and, and i think yeah, I mean, e even answering that question is hard because everyone thinks something different about the cloud and, and perspectives about what the cloud is, I think, vary from one person to another. Um, so that's a tricky question to answer. That might actually be a topic uh, on its own. Yeah, fair point. I mean, I see where we're sitting and how many minutes we've been talking to these fine people out here. So but I think I think there's something interesting to talk about cloud. Because The more I kind of think about microservices going to containers and containers are managed by this orchestration service that we're starting to talk about cloud and hopefully in a different way than you guys have heard. So I think that's what, I think that's where Marcus and I are going with this for those of you out there. We just, you know, I think it makes sense for us to do another video on cloud. Give us a shot. Cause I know everybody has videos on this. Give us a shot that it yeah, may be a little bit it. different way to do it that, than you've seen before. So awesome job, Marcus, yeah. as always, you're a star man. You know, I love you. Likewise. All right. Thanks everybody. Love you too. <laughs> we'll see you uh, in the next video. Yeah. See you guys.